What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Of course, I'm your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with a brand new episode of TGIF, and we're going to have a whole bunch of fun. Of course, we're here to spill the tea and break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and on social media over a nice beverage or two, depending on who's unlocking their better self this week or not. Uh, so please let me introduce my co-host. Please welcome fresh off the red carpet. Hi. He still <laughs> has that red carpet glow. Mr. Al Reynolds, what's uh, up, Al? Hey, Claudia, what's going on? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm trying. I'm getting restless. I want to get out the house. But yeah, I'm good. How are you? All is good. You know, I, I got the President's Volunteer Service Award today, which is the Lifetime Achievement Award from President Biden and Kamala Harris. So today was a really good day for me. But I had to leave the ceremony early in order to do the show. So I'm excited to be back and ready to talk about this high tea. You left the Presidential Award to come to our show? Of course. Not I love either. you guys. My <laughs> week is not complete like all the soulmates. My week is not complete if I don't hear your voice and laugh at Funky's commentary. <laughs> how, how, did, uh, how, did Biden, how did you come to get on Biden's radar like that? Like, what happened? So, you know, I sat on the board for Mother Hale, who took in AIDS babies for over a decade. And I also sat on the Armory Board for over a decade. And we were the largest homeless shelter as well as after school educational program for um, black and brown kids in the state of New York. So from doing that work, um, I was appointed by Elliot Spitzer. So he saw all of it. He's been following all the things that I've been doing, and he thought it was my time. Congratulations. All right, Thank Al. You. All right, can you see what's happening here? Get I don't ready. feel I don't feel accomplished enough, honey. <laughs> Me Come neither. On. Screw the, our the, lar the, the largest thing I did in life, y'all, was I was in the Black Student Union when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I got. <laughs> Please welcome Funky Danny. What's up, Q? What's going on there? Clearly not as much as Al. He got me want to reevaluate my life. Shit. <laughs> you want play, something guys. wrong? He, you, so w were you actually actually in the room with Biden and, and Vice President Harris? So Biden wasn't there, but Vice President Kamala was there. So I Did think get... Biden, I didn't, I couldn't stay for the whole program, but allegedly he was supposed to do like a, a filmed thank you, you know, like Did... where they put you up on the screen. Did you get a picture with, Did you get a picture with her? No, I, I, because I, I wasn't able to stay a long time. And plus, there was some stuff going on to get this package ready for you guys today. I had a lot. I couldn't stay inside. I was outside, a lot of stuff going on. But I do and will have her. She's supposed to keep my award for me. So maybe when I go to her office, I'll be able to take a picture and share with the soulmates. That would be amazing. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Couldn't get that past that presidential clearing, huh? That White House clearance. <laughs> <laughs> they said, don't you be getting drunk at Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. That's awesome. That's that's amazing. We're very happy and very proud of you. That's super, super dope. So uh, listen, before I get to uh, what we are all doing for the weekend, Al, I want to just go back on to you real quick. Uh, I asked you if you're still high from your red carpet appearance from the Golden Globes. Are you? You know what, Claudia, it was such an amazing experience to witness so much black excellence. It was just so many beautiful melanin on the carpet and grace in the red carpet. And before we dive into our topics, here's a look, everyone, of a clip that I made chatting it up with some of our favorite um, actors and actress at the 80th Golden Globe um, Awards. Take a look. What's up, Fox Soul soulmates and TJF fans? This is Al Reynolds coming to you live from the red carpet right here at the 80th Golden Globes, where we're celebrating diversity in film and television. Tonight, Eddie Murphy is going to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. What is your favorite Eddie Murphy movie? Raw. I think about that leather suit. Right. Everybody wanted a leather suit right. after Eddie had a leather suit. Red. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the red. Today is such a monumental time for us because of the controversy with diversity. Can you talk to me about what this means? Because you're very vocal in this space. I feel like it's more important that we be the change that we want to be. And I think that when we do that, you will see the change. And it's important to have, you know, equality uh, in the voting ranks as well as, you know, in front of the screen, behind the camera, and that's a big step towards the right direction. I'm so excited for Abbott Elementary and everybody getting their due. To be here tonight with Shirley Ralph nominated and me getting to present in that category, to me it's just, it's everything. I feel so happy to be here especially the year that the Hollywood Foreign Press is opening up its heart, mind, and membership 
to others. We've worked hard. We put in the work. And we just we deserve to have our place at events like this. Do you know that Angela Bassett will be the first mm -hmm. actor yes. in the Marvel brand to receive a Golden Globe? Now, no shade to her, but I think you might be the second. Hey, listen. I would love to be the second, but tonight my mama's about to be the first. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fox Soul, Soul Base, and TGIF fans. This is Al Reynolds signing out from the 80th Golden Globes right here in Los Angeles. So, Claudia, see how incredible that was to see all that color. You've done these carpets a hundred times over to see all that color on the carpet. And last year, there was no Golden Globes because of the, the, the controversy around diversity. So they shut it down. So this year, they really stacked the show and showed a lot of love, not only to the actors, but also to black media like us at Fox Soul. Very nice. Very nice. I'm glad they made up for last year because that was a hot mess. I'm glad they made up for it this year. It looked like they had a lot of us there, too, this year as well. Yes. All right. All right. Um, lots of fun. And we look forward to more from you. Uh, what y'all sipping on tonight, y'all? And when drinking, what we doing? Coors Light. I'm, I'm not drinking nothing. I ordered me some Popeyes from DoorDash, so it'll be here <laughs> by the time we get off air. Just a little ghetto chicken sandwich, a little French fry, a little strawberry fanta. I had Popeyes yesterday. Now that I lost his weight, I can eat all that nonsense. The apple, they got the best apple pies. They like the I ordered an apple pie too. It, oh, and it's oh. so good when you put it in your air fryer to get it extra hot. Mm. Real good. I'm drinking some uh, apple pie flavored Baileys tonight. That's all I had left of the bottle. Oh, you had that since Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I only drink on the Mondays and Friday shows for the most part. So mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, kind of sad to just be at the house drinking by myself, huh? No, it's okay. fine. I think it's kind of sad. Two cats and drinking at the house by itself. You're a single female. I don't drink, but, and I know y'all not gonna believe. I'm drinking. What? I don't drink at home. It's funny how the computer is kind of going out right when you're trying to say this. <laughs> I like, don't like? drink. I don't drink at home, and I swear <laughs> to God, there is never an instance where I'm sitting in the house and I'm like. Oh, I want a vodka and cranberry, and I go to the refrigerator. The only instance by which I drink at home is if I have people over. Um, if not, I go out to drink. I, I will say so that. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic after all. <laughs> <laughs> I think drink is only fun if you go into something where, or you're gonna have sex. Right. I can agree with that. Like if you're going like, out to have fun, or if you're staying in to have sex. Yeah, I can. I can yeah. agree with that. It's a waste of messing up your liver. Or if you're going out to have sex. <laughs> you said if you're staying in to have sex. I said, or if you're going yeah, out there. You know, you like doing it outside. Good nature. <laughs> All right, y'all. Make sure y'all put your comments and your questions for the end of the show. For the three of us in the chat, we'll get to your little shady questions at the very end of the show, the, the last segment. Let's get to the show. Let's get into it. Cheryl Lee Ralph is standing on her word after she was asked. What she would tell her 15-year-old self during the interview on the red carpet at the Golden Globes. Now, Ralph replied with, there is nothing wrong with your nose. There is nothing wrong with the shade of your skin. There is nothing wrong with the way your hair grows out of your head. She continued, and there certainly is nothing wrong with your lips because there will always be some people called Kardashians, and they will pay $10,000 for your lips. Hang in there, 15-year-old Shirley Ralph. You're good. Now, later that night, Shirley posted the following tweet and said, I said what I said. Now I'm going to bed. Good night. Are y'all here for Shirley Ralph's comments? Let's start with you, Q. What you think about this? She was like, oh, and I said it. Okay, so, I mean, on the surface, you know, from a Black auntie level, she said what she said. She meant it, and she, and she, she stood 10 toes down. Um, just on a how did I get in it situation, I mean, you know, I don't want to go up against Auntie Cheryl, but she didn't have to shade them. Like, we all know who she was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if it would have been in the, in the reverse, we would have had all types of attitude. We would have had all types of things to say if somebody would have made a backhanded situation referring Cheryl. So, I mean, I don't know. It was cool. She told the truth, but I just wish Cheryl always keeps it classy. I just wish she would have been like, because there are the others out there that will pay to get it in their lips. And we all could have deduced who she was talking about. So not to necessarily call out the Kardashians. Right, but because it's kind of like, what did I do? How did I get into it? Why are you throwing shade at us? Right. That makes sense. Um, Al, what do you think? Claudia, can I just tell you, 
They stole my question. They stole my question. So the placement of this particular reporter was three people down from me. And you know how crammed we are. So I asked this question first to her. I didn't call, I didn't say 15 year old. Her daughter was with me. And I said, hey, Cheryl, what would you tell the younger version of yourself, like your daughter who is standing right beside you? And she said those exact words that you heard right there. So for me, when I took it in from the context in which she shared it with me, it made perfect sense. Her daughter's black her daughter has these Af african features and she wanted her daughter to know hey you're in hollywood don't let anybody ever tell you that any of these features that i've given you as your mother is bad that's how i took it so of course it was endearing to me and i loved it okay i think two again two things can be true at the same time it was good advice to her daughter yeah she didn't have to bring the kardashians here but we got it i, I guess she did it to make a point like we get it and yeah. there are a lot of women that are others that are definitely getting all the black features installed. All right, y'all, moving on after it. Oh, hold on before we move on real quick. Mm -hmm. I was having a conversation with a friend in there about the BBLs. Mm -hmm. Just a quick sidebar, complete, complete aside. Is it me or only women of color, particularly black women and Latin women are the only ones getting the BBLs? Like we don't see the Asian women get them. Are the white women getting BBLs? Not oh, absolutely. Them. Yes. Are they? Never see them. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got if you follow different plastic surgeons on um IG, where black white women are doing it, but they're they don't have as much egg. Well, I'm I'm getting ready. I'm going down the wrong road. Let's go and skip this. But Madonna got one and that didn't really turn out so well. <laughs> A lot of the white women Q get it, but they don't have such excess fat that they can move from one area to another to make it so big. And usually the black and brown women want a very voluptuous one. A, a, you know, a lot of the white women that do it usually just want a, you know, a little bit more plump and a little bit more curved. They don't want all gotcha. that extra because they can't fit the clothes that they're used to shopping for. There's well, fat white women out there that got plenty of fat. Look at how well, you we, can, we can't safely say the Asian women ain't getting them. <laughs> no. I think in their culture, it's like, it's a positive to have a flat butt. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm dying to see an Asian girl with, with, with just a big old cocoa, cocoa ice tea white booty and titties. That will make me holler. Well, you got to go to the clubs, Q, in Miami. Go to live and also go to the clubs here in New York. Well, in New York City. They, you know, the ones that are chasing that little set, they definitely got it. Okay. It's the white girls that want to be with black men that get them. Right. I'm exactly. Go ahead and say it. That's who does get. It. You're right. I do remember seeing them in the clubs, but I haven't been in a club in so damn long mm -hmm. as I shouldn't be. But yeah, they in there. Unlike um, you, I'm 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 still floating around. <laughs> I can't take the light. I went to SEK yesterday because it's like real close to where I live. I can walk there in Dallas. It's so nice. It was music and it was a vibe. I was sitting at the bar. Like that was enough for me. Like I can't imagine trying to like, squeeze through the crowd. I'm too like. I'm a bar girl. I can't, I don't like screaming. I need to hear you. By the time I finish trying to talk to you over the music, my throat hurt. The drinks are overpriced. It's noisy. My feet hurt. These jeans are uncomfortable. It's just a whole lot going on with the club. Give me a bar or a nice restaurant and I can sit there six, seven hours with the club. I'm good. I do a dinner. Yes. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's get into this. It's official. After months of a rumored romance, damn son Idris uh, confirmed his relationship with Lori Harvey after posting a photo of him kissing Harvey on his Instagram story. They are Instagram official. What are your thoughts on this new couple? Al, let's start with you. What are you thinking? Hey, Lori Harvey don't mess around. That girl moved fast because we just saw the cover, saw her on the cover of Essence where she says she's single and she's focusing on herself only for a couple of days later for us to see her new boyfriend post that um, they're actually in a relationship. Now, Claudia, you called this before and this is what it kind of gives me. You know, I'm here for the black love for sure but these men appears to be like exactly what you're saying claudia they're they chase after these women that have had these very public relationships with other well-known celebrity men and i kind of feel like that that's what's giving me because let me tell you something there are some beautiful young girls out here uh judge mathis's daughter jade is absolutely beautiful i in my opinion she looks better than um better than uh, lori harvey and she's educated, she's a lawyer. Um, so I'm wondering if it's a little bit of what you called it a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about this that's going on in here. I'm saying, Q, real quick before we go to commercial. Um, she giving us a black Kim Kardashian vibe and I'm here for it. It's about time we had us a black Kim Kardashian. So I, I'm, I'm here for it. 
I mean, she's young. She's supposed to date till she finds the one. So I ain't mad at her. If she wasn't famous, nobody would care. All right, y'all, quick commercial break. We'll be back with more of us being in everybody's business when we return. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. Real quick, I got to mention today's a special day. Today's a special day. Today marks the third year that Fox Soul has been around, killing the game. We've increased by over 5,000%. That was like a year ago. I think we probably about six, 7,000% since we started this little engine that could. So congratulations to the entire Fox Soul team and everybody that makes Fox Soul the great platform that it is. We did it. Just want to say that. Shout out our own self. And there's been other streaming services that try to do it now that had $2 billion. I'm not going to say their name, but they failed after six months. And Fox Soul, we on year three. So congratulations to uh, Hugh and Al. You're part of that, of course. Congratulations. What do y'all think about that real quick? They, I, I, listen, I, listen, let, let me tell you something, baby. Stable money ain't never ain't never upset me, baby. Okay, I'm looking forward to year four, five, six, seven, twelve, and nine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, let's move on. We got to get into this because listen, pigs must be flying out in these streets because Fifty Cent has apologized to someone. Now, despite having bullied Megan Thee Stallion on social media during Tory Lane's trial, Fifty Cent is now taking the high road by issuing an apology to Megan for siding with Tory. 50 Cent said, I'm going to apologize to Megan Thee Stallion. He continued, and the only reason why I felt at some point I should apologize to her was when I heard the phone call conversation. <clears throat> that made me feel like, oh bleep, nah, that's what will happen. Do you think his apology is sincere? And what do you think about his apology? Let's start with you, Al. So I got to be honest with you, Claudia, and, and this is something I learned in therapy. I, I really feel like he could have kept that apology. It felt backhanded to me. I, I firmly believe you don't apologize. You don't apologize with a but or with a because, right? If you apologize, you apologize for being wrong. Period. You don't have to give a reason for an apology. And I felt like the, in, in the fact that he was trying to explain his reason for giving an apology, it felt manufactured. Okay. All right. Al Q, what do you think? You know, I, I disagree slightly a little bit only in this situation, only because he was explaining what brought him to the place of apology. He was, he's basically saying, I didn't believe her until I heard the evidence. Now that I've heard the evidence, I'm going to offer up an apology. And listen, you know, backhanded or not, a half-ass apology is a lot coming from 50 Cent because 50 trolls everybody and don't, don't give nobody no type of nothing. And I'm 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 glad to see somebody in the industry taking the lead on um, let's show her some support and let's start apologizing because a lot of the guys in the industry for whatever reason did jump on the Megan hate train. So I'm glad to see Fifty Cent take this take this on and apologize. Yeah, and I don't know why it seems like lately things have been getting really worse when it comes to the battle of the sexes. Like, why are we even having a battle of the sexes? It should be more of a right is right and wrong is wrong. Like, why is it always going to be so, like, these bitches this, so these hoes that, or these... And it got so ugly when she was, in fact, the victim. So I, I, I'm i going to have to go with you on this one, well, um, um, Q, because he's not someone that is big on apologies. Mm -hmm. So the fact mm -hmm. that he did, I, I understand what he's saying, what made him because you know he probably feels a little dumb he did go yeah. hard against her so now he's got to justify it with well this is why but or, I gotta or, so or, go it could be possible that he straight up didn't believe her you yeah. know what i'm saying like which is valid there are a lot of people who did not believe her until evidence came out and, and, we had, of, and we're still confused as to what happened right yeah. and he's got a lot of followers so that's pretty influential and i gotta say this although we joke about soldier boy being the first rapper always saying he the first rapper to do this and the first rapper to do that i gotta give soldier boy his props because he went on live and he was saying how you know he he condemned men the tory shooting will we shooting women now we didn't say women but he kind of called other people out about it and i was like okay soldier boy you were the first at this one so i'm not mad at you for this all right, y'all, speaking of Tory Lanez, people on social media are having a field day over what appears to be Lanez's mugshot. One person wrote, Rock Nation saw Tory Lanez smiling at his mugshot and said, nah, bet. Another person wrote, is giving inmate of the month. Q, is it giving inmate of the month? And is he the it new, is so, it is is he the is new so prison bay? It is so, so first off, um, Tory Lanez, he looks handsome in that picture. Um, and it is giving very much prison glamour shots, senior book, um, very much like very 
you know, I am most likely to succeed, see me in 10 years. Well, <laughs> in, in this case, I'm most likely to do 10 years or whatever the case may be. But he looked good. I'm, I'm just, I know he got all type of hair pieces and contraptions. So I'm just curious to know if he's going to be able to keep that pretty boy look up while he's behind bars. But so far, his, his perm and his painted on hairline holding up. So that's it's good. Got- he he's one of those people that's not he needs maintenance to keep that look together. That's the yeah. best I've ever seen him look. Yeah. Um my friend does those like fake them they, he fixes the top. What do you call them? Man weave. Man, man, a man weave, man it's weave. Like, it's like a little cap and he makes he puts the waves in them. Mm-hmm. That needs constant maintenance. Like one of my friends, men, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, my girl Nikki, her I had when he went to Miami. And it started peeling because of humidity and got real itchy. See. <laughs> and so then you're imagine- stuck with the option of tearing it off and looking a fool or wearing it and looking a fool. So you you probably want to look bad in prison though, right, Al? What you think? Look, well, for him, maybe so, because he's very handsome. But I, I'm with Q on this one. I guess I'm with both of you on this one. I mean, if production can put that picture back up, clearly that's a hair piece because we know we've never seen that full of a head of hair on him. And we also know in, in the United States, well, maybe it's because he's in Canada, guys. Maybe in Canada it's different. But if he was in the United States, we know that all hair weaves, whether it's glued, braided, or sewn in, has to be removed upon your booking. So maybe it's in Canada that you don't follow those same laws. So maybe Maybe he can have his man weave in Canada. He's in a Canadian prison. I don't know if they ex, ex if they what. I don't put think him he's out an country. Well, he hasn't been sentenced yet. Yeah, and he, and and he wouldn't be. You committed the crime in America. And and said, so, all so, right, I was just trying to figure out a reason why he's able oh. to keep it because it's not allowed in you know it's not allowed in the United States. So maybe. We won't see that full of hair when we get an update on him in the prison. Oh, but you know what? He was out on bail during the uh-huh. court. And then he got remanded immediately. So that arrest picture is the day after oh, of the trial. Oh, that yeah. Makes sense. Okay, yeah. So had a little, looking... yeah, because in court he had that pink outfit on. So yeah, he had that That's on. smart, Q. Real quick, can you put the picture up real quick, production? I'm gonna need black celebrities that get this new money to knock it off with these humongous veneers. Like it's too big. Like your mouth is only so big. Like, look at how big that tooth is. Like he's sm- look at how big those teeth are. Yeah. They and are- two, you know- and two, don't get the big white ones. It, everybody knows Dr. Heavenly is a good friend of mine. We were just at Houston's last week when I was in Atlanta. And she says, when you get your fake teeth, they are supposed to be the color of your eyes. Like that is the that is the litmus test for what color your fake teeth are supposed to be, not those big chicklets. But I'm gonna tell you something, Claudia, about those teeth. And here's what I figured out with black people in these teeth. I had a white home girl that got the big fish lips, the Kim Zosiac lips. Mm. And I asked her, I said, straight up, I said, you know this don't look good. Like, you know the old pictures of you look better, right? Because we got that type of relationship. I said, so why are white women doing this? And she said that the lips are a status thing. And I think with black people, the big, super white, chiclet-looking teeth Mm. has become a status thing. It's like the minute you get a bag, bam, I got my rolly. Bam, I got my teeth. You know what I'm saying? I think that's why Dr. Heavenly has told me she's had people come in her office to get the teeth. And she told them, um, you know, she does natural looking teeth. And they've got up out of her chair because she refused to give them those big chiclet looking teeth. I would have got out of her chair. I love those white teeth. I think they look handsome on him. I think they look handsome on Mayweather. I think the white of the teeth, you know, that's called iPod. Yeah, iPod white. And I, I like it. I don't know why. It's just something about it to me. It just makes them look cleaner. It makes them look sexier. And it makes them look more sophisticated to me. I like white teeth. And I'm, I do appreciate people getting their teeth done that need it. But they sometimes go overboard. When now you they're, too big. they're too big. And look like you can't like, look at how Takashi yeah. 6'9". Close your mouth. <laughs> Even and, when I'm and, you know what? And, and I promise you, I'm not being shady in this moment. And I don't want it to turn into a shady viral moment. But look at Eva's new teeth. She got new teeth? Yeah. Yeah, she did. She got veneers on. It changed her look. She looked cute with her old teeth. I thought she looked I thought she looked beautiful with her old teeth. Okay, moving on. According to news reports, a carrier pigeon, carrier pigeons are out here in these streets, birds delivering birds, okay, was caught inside (laughs) a British Columbia prison wearing a bag of crystal meth that looked like a little mini backpack. A ratchet bird. Officers were standing in one of the inmate fence unit yards and they noticed something strange. 
The gray bird with a small backpack on his back. <laughs> the officers moved in on the pigeon, and after a lengthy period of time, they apprehended the bird, removed its cargo, and set it free. Now, the mini backpack contained about 30 grams of crystal meth, which they described as a fairly substantial amount of the intensely addictive stimulant. What are your thoughts on the drug smuggling carrier pigeon? Q, I see you bursting at this. <laughs> Go ahead, Q. Listen, baby, I love it. And you know, Peter, while y'all out here throwing paint on people's dead furs, y'all need to be worrying about these live pigeons carrying drugs. And you know, I think whoever get caught for doing this should catch multiple charges outside of drug smuggling. They should also catch some type of animal endangerment charge. Because could you imagine if that pigeon like went to its nest and like the other birds started pecking around, then they got high off their stuff. <laughs> and then we would really be like Alfred Hitchcock birds, the birds going crazy, attacking oh, us. No. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> then, then we got crack, ba <laughs> crack baby birds. You know what I'm saying? The birds crying and chirping all night long because they feeding for their fix. And um, we don't listen. America is already ghetto enough. We don't need intoxicated animals. So I <laughs> pigeons, right? Gets in trouble for this to catch human charges and animal charges. How did they? Tra what would they expect? Like the bird knew where to go. Like you just put oh, meth on a random yeah. bird. Yeah, Claudia, Claudia. Okay, if you but think like, how does it know where to go? Yeah, listen, if you know the history of the pigeon, the pigeon is very smart. Remember in New Zealand, pigeons in the 1800s used to be mail carriers. And then fast forward to that, like, you know, the original pigeon, you know, Reuters, the the, the news agency, they used pigeons to disseminate their, their uh, paper um, route. And also in the war, pigeons were used to, were as an intelligence agents. So pigeons are super smart. They carry, they find, they do as they're told, and they're very loyal. So I totally thought that this was a very smart idea because you don't see it coming and you don't see it going unlike the drones you can fat you can you could track a drone and go back to the owner whereas a pigeon how you know who the pigeon belonged to and how do you know who the pigeon is going to you can't prove it so it's a win-win for those inmates until they got caught so i get that they used to train birds but to train something right you gotta like repeat the action okay do it and then re you reward it I'm thinking if it's bringing crystal meth to a prison, it's probably its first time going there, right? Like, did it do it before? Is this is this the first time it just got caught? Is this pigeon has this pigeon been out on these streets? I don't know. I just think it's hilarious. Like, you made a backpack for a pigeon. How do you even put it on? <laughs> how do you even know how to put it on the pigeon? Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of questions about this. Like, you know, I know Mike Tyson was big on pigeons. He had a whole bunch of pigeons that he was training, but I don't know what he was doing with them. So. No. I'm still laughing over these high pigeons. <laughs> All I think is pigeons? crap everywhere. Because you're right. pigeons. It's a, it's a good point though, because there's a lot of crack out in the streets. And you think about pigeons, there probably have been a lot of pigeons that have done crack. Mm -hmm. They eat all that stuff. Okay. You know what? That's for a whole nother conversation for a whole nother mm -hmm. day. We're gonna take a quick commercial break on the uh, leave off on the high note of, of <laughs> drug dealing pigeons. We'll be right back after this. High pigeons. <laughs> Welcome back to TGIF. I don't know why, but that pigeon story is like my favorite story of the night so far. <laughs> it's so funny to me. All right, y'all. Anyways, listen, um, speaking of things that make me laugh and make me smile, I there's a lot of hobbies that I have. And I'm going to tell you how this next thing can really help you out and keep it going, especially right now with the you know high inflation and all the prices going up on everything. But listen, you may not know this about me, but I, I love doing, um, I love cooking for my friends. I love going on a road trip, putting, filling up the gas tank and going on a road trip. And like I said, cooking for my friends. However, that can get really expensive, especially with the price hikes lately. It's out of control. That's why I have to tell you about my new favorite way to save with Upside. Now, Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. Now, with Upside... I get cash back on every purchase that I can use to fund my grocery shopping, my gas, my road trips, all the stuff that make me happy, my hobbies. Um, now, it's basically cash back for just doing you. Now, um, it really does put money back in your pockets, and it's for stuff that you already do. And that's why it's such an amazing app that I really and encourage you to get. Now, in comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Plus, Upside doesn't sell your personal information to third parties. Now, they know that your information is a vital part of their trusted relationship with you. Upside users are earning hundreds of dollars a year. That's probably why 
They have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Now download the free Upside app and use promo code TGIF to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon of your first tank of gas. That's an extra 25 cents for every gallon on your first tank of gas using promo code TGIF. Fellas, are you fans of this Upside? Oh my goodness, Claudia. Yes. And it was the gas. So you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, my story, you know, I, I, I travel to two or three cities a week and I rent a lot of cars. I used the app to find a gas station when I was returning the car, something that I'm the worst at. I'm, I return <laughs> rental cars with hardly no gas. Upside not only showed me the closest gas station, but I saved and I got savings and I got money. So it was a win-win. Okay. Q? I'm going to tell you the feature I like the, the most with Upside. You can be just driving down the street, minding your business, and then some alert will go off your phone, and it'll be like, gas is this much at this place and save this That's much. Right. You know what? Let me yell this bad boy in here because gas on my side of town is more expensive. And I'll be like, every time, it, it always gets me, and, and I, I I love that 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 feature. All right, y'all. Listen, it's it seems it's easy, it's fun, and cash back right in your pockets, especially in these days. We can all use a few extra bucks. Go ahead and check out that Upside app. All right, y'all. We got to get into this now. Um, this Odell Beckham story, y'all see the I, Al. You mentioned it on the last show, but I didn't get to see mm-hmm. the video until today. Uh, now, now Odell Beckham Jr. was kicked off a flight for defying a flight attendant's orders. Well, the police body cam footage has been released, and it shows what occurred moments before Beckham was escorted from the plane. Take a look. To me, Where's his pants? Oh, sure. Where's the baby's pants? What do you mean? You only got his underwear. Yeah. Yeah, they're all. Ooh, all right, now the flight attendant asked officers if Beckham was wearing pants because she claimed that he only had been wearing his underwear earlier. Now, the flight attendants say they were concerned because Beckham appeared to be in and out of consciousness as they attempted to wake him up so he could fasten his seatbelts. Now, the flight attendant told officers that Beckham needed to be removed from the plane. Fellas, uh, Al, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on the situation? I didn't like it. I didn't like it. First of all, I didn't like how the flight attendants handled the situation. When the cops came on board, they did their assessment and they made the decision according to the camp that he was in a coherent uh, position. He knew where he was and he said that he was just tired because he had, he had stayed out all night and came straight to the plane. I didn't like how the, the Spanish woman handled it and I didn't like how her white male colleague handled it as if he was some type of immediate threat. And last thing is the captain is supposed to be the one to make the last assessment and call on these types of things. And he will let the uh, flight attendants lean in. But I needed to see if that captain came out and made his own assessment because the assessment of those two were not good enough for me. Okay. Key, what do you think? And what do you think about him being allegedly being on a plane with it, just in his underwear? Um... You know, it, it, it's funny because I'm, 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 when she said he's only had his underwear on earlier, I'm like, okay, is this one of those cultural misunderstandings where maybe he had on some basketball shorts and she's yeah. calling them underwear? Because I know good and damn well he didn't just come through the airport with his dingling flopping around in some underwear. And as far as him being incoherent, when they asked him to put his seatbelt on, hell, that's what you want a damn incoherent passion just to go lay the hell back and not bother you. I mean, all they had to do was tap and make us put a seatbelt on and let the man pass the hell back out. It's not like he was being loud, belligerent, drunk, or screaming. So I completely think they overreacted and were just doing the most. And as much as we don't want to lean on race and automatically call things racial, um, it probably had a lot to do with the color of his skin and the style of his hair. Let me play devil's advocate real quick on this. If this was a, a, a white rowdy per, a white person doing this will we be giving excuses for him or do you think he really no was? absolutely not they the cops came in and did their assessment he had on bermuda shorts he had on shorts colorful shorts he also answered all the questions the cops then said ma'am he looks fine to me he looks fine to me and he wants to fly and then she was like why first of all why are you calling him a baby he's not a baby he's a grown man it, it address him properly to me it felt personal it felt personal, and I didn't like it. And if it was a white guy, I would be defending him the same way. There's no reason American Airlines should have made all those customers deplane because of the insecurities of those two flight attendants. 
you know, you know go ahead. I was also gonna say in, in these cases, we always get the video midway through the altercation. Mm -hmm. I would be curious to know what happened from the very, very beginning because right. there probably is a little more to it than what we're seeing. All too often we get a little bit of the video and we don't get the whole story. Um, but then also there are a lot of people that are violating us based on making an assessment of us based on our skill and our, our skin tone. So it's kind of like hard to make a call on it. Especially but I will say this, being, being, being sleepy on a plane, like I purposely stay up all night the night before. So when I'm on the plane, I want to be knocked sleep. out the entire, entire time. And sometimes I don't put my seatbelt on. I'm going to be the first to admit that I don't. And I do be trying to get away with it by putting a scarf over my waist. And so I want to be comfortable and go to sleep. So should I ever get kicked off the plane for that? I don't think so. And then, you know, Claudia, you fly in first class. I fly in first class. It's not many of us that look like us in first class. Let's be honest. And so I just feel like it was a, a way too aggressive, in my opinion. Correct. After he woke up, right after he woke up and he uh, responded to the cops, the captain should have came out and made his assessment. She was still in a tizzy. He's clearly responding right now. He's clearly fine. Let the man go home. Correction, I sometimes fly first class. <laughs> oh, I remember those days where everybody was flying Miss Claudia Jordan first class. <laughs> it's a booking, I'm flying, flying first class. If you see me in coach, it's a trip that I decided to go on. Okay, all right, I'm just keeping it a buck. Hey, quick commercial break. Uh, soulmates, I need you to put your questions in the chat because we don't have any, we have hardly any questions for the uh, last part of the show. I do see other questions about my sister. We'll give updates. So put all your questions in the chat for the three of us so we can spend the last segment answering our beloved soulmates. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. Once again, soulmates, go ahead and get your questions in the chat now so we got our producers can put them up for us in the queue so we can get to them at the last part of the show. We need all your questions as soon as possible. Okay, y'all, let's get back to it. Now, soulmates, we know how much you enjoy hearing about funky shenanigans in these streets just as much as we do. In between him going through phases where he claims to be unlocking his better self, but we thought we'd give you some cute time with Funky Dineva. Cute. Take it away. So this is how I know I was not meant to be a booster. I'm going to tell you, I stole out the store one time and never again. I was in high school and I went to the store. I went to a Gadzooks and there was some Jabo jeans on the rack. And I decided I was going to steal these jeans because I just wanted them. I didn't want to pay for them. And so I put the jeans, I, I, I feel down the jeans. I don't feel no tag or nothing. And I put the jeans in my bag. Baby, when I walked out that door, that alarm alert thing went off. I looked back at the white girl at the counter. She looked at me. She didn't know what to do. All of a sudden, two mall security officers started walking towards me. And I took off running, <laughs> screaming. I was like, oh. <laughs> Threw the jeans up in the dog on air, <laughs> jumped in my Toyota Cressida, my 1986 Toyota Cressida, and peeled it 90 miles an hour outside of the mall. And this is how I know God is real, because I know those people got my tag number. I know they did, but to this day, they never sent a bill or a note to my daddy's house. And I remember going home crying, saying, Lord, if you let me get out of this, I will never steal again. <laughs> and I never stole jeans. Out the <laughs> jeans again. Now, in your defense, Jabot jeans were expensive as hell. They were expensive. And mind you, they were like a hundred and something dollars. And that was a week salary for me in, in high school. I worked at Target in high school. And so my checks would be about $145 for the week. So Q, you didn't know that there was a sensor on it? No. So they, they cuffed the jeans and the sensor was in the cuff. See, that's, that's how you know I wasn't meant to be a booster because I didn't know about the cuff. I just thought they put it in the traditional spot on the waistband or on the pocket, but it was in the cuff. And I was like, yeah, you, you two, you two, you're not street smart enough to be a booster, Q, so stop. Well, I heard there's a few ways to get those sensors off, but I forgot, but I have heard. <laughs> <laughs> have y'all ever stolen as teenagers? I did. I, I did. It, it, and I didn't need it. I didn't need it. It was just like for a rush. It was just like, See if I, I, I have a thing where I like to see if I can get away with things and that still carries on to this day. And yeah, I, I wasn't cut out for it though. Cause I would definitely feel guilty, but I did. 
Let me tell you what I used to steal, Q. I used to, and I, and I didn't think about it. I used to steal the magazines out of the grocery stores. So while I was shopping and, you know, I was be reading a magazine, I would hold the magazine in my hand and the lady would run all the groceries through and never charge me for the magazine. And so you picked up on that behavior and just kept doing it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if it works, why change it? Okay. Well, I, it, apparently the entire TGIF cast is just ghetto. Just ghetto. Don't, don't ghetto. invite none of us in your house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, listen, TSA agents stopped a woman at the airport, Tampa airport, after finding a four-foot-long boa constrictor in her carry-on. Now, the woman told agents that the snake named Bartholomew was her emotional support animal. Now, the TSA Northeast Twitter account posted a photo of the x-ray and wrote, snake on a plane? This is at a TSA x-ray of Bartholomew, a boa constrictor who was in a traveler's carry-on bag at Flight Tampa last month. Now, the woman claimed the snake was her emotional support pet. TSA notified the airline which ruled airline which ruled that there was not going to be a snake on the plane. Now, I heard some wild stories about emotional support animals, and I did try it a couple of times with my cats. Um, I heard one time someone brought a peacock on a plane. Al, what do you think about this story? <laughs> well, first of all, all this stuff is happening in Florida. Uh, Odell Beckham, Florida. Remember that lady that threw, flew, blew, I mean, threw the thing, the 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 computer at the flight lady. It was in Florida, and now this is in Florida. In this case, she was very clever because if you have a emotional support animal, you're supposed to present the paperwork and the animal as you walk through the security. But she knew this particular airline excluded her support animal, so she tried to running through the radar through the x-ray and they got her and you know what airlines are never required to accept three things that snakes reptiles ferrets and rodents those four things those are the four that they're never required to accept but they can take a peacock claudia that's ridiculous peacock shitting on the aisles mm -hmm. like spreading <laughs> the feathers all the way getting someone in, in the eye Cute but it's keeping the person calm you know, and, and this is coming from a dog person. Um, the whole emotional support thing is just straight up bullshit at this point. Like y'all have completely, you know, you give people an inch, they take a mile. Mm -hmm. Like, especially down here in Miami, it's a very dog heavy city. Everything is emotional support. The emotional support that the, uh, the lady brought a damn dog in Houston the other day. And I'm all for dogs and animals being at like outdoor-esque restaurants. What the hell did people do in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and the early 2000s when emotional support animals did not exist? It wasn't a thing. You got your ass on the airplane or the Greyhound bus or you went out to eat and you, you, you held it together or you took your crazy pills. You know what I'm saying? You smoked a cigarette or you had a drink. You know what I'm saying? Like all this emotional support stuff, honestly and truthfully, I'm about ready for, on a federal level for them to just ban it because it's just gotten completely out of control. Speaking of, at my, my apartment complex, we're not allowed to have large breed dogs. Um, man downstairs, Rottweiler, our downstairs has some that have gates. Rottweiler got out the gate and attacked somebody. And the only reason his Rottweiler was allowed to be in the property is because it was an emotional support dog. And the only recourse our property management had moving forward was while you can't exclude emotional support animals, you can force them to have an absorbent amount of insurance as a deterrent. Mm. Yeah. yeah, people aren't built like they used to be back in the day, I think. Like, yeah. if your emotions that fucked up that you can't get on a flight for an hour and a half, then you don't you need to be go. going nowhere. You need to stay home. Especially those big dogs that they put in a seat beside them. That dog, that is scary. Especially for people who have dog phobias. I still can't get over the peacock. And it's okay. inconsiderate. It's just inconsiderate. You know what I'm saying? And and, and it's funny because I, I can't stand inconsiderate people. Like don't, yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going to be considerate of our advertising and take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Once again, get your questions in the chat for the end of the show. Before we go on real quick, I, I do want to just say uh, rest in peace and acknowledge that Lisa Marie Presley passed away at the age of 54. I didn't get to say that at the top of the show, Elvis' daughter. So I just want to say that um, she passed away. Y'all heard about that, right? Yeah, I saw yeah. it on the carpet with the character who played her dad. That's yeah. the guy that was a part of my package. Yeah, that was really sad. Yeah. You know, death, 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 
plagues their family because her son committed suicide. Two years ago. And, um, you know, I, I, they have not released the cause of death, and I'm not trying to be tacky. Um, but on the red carpet interview, she didn't look well. Yeah, no, she didn't look good. They she said didn't she had look a, well. I heard, it, I, I'm not sure if it was confirmed, but I did hear a heart attack. But it's been, it seems like it's been happening a lot of cardiac arrest lately. Yeah, but I want to follow that. Like, mm -hmm, right. And I'll be respectful and not go there, but let's follow what caused the heart attack. That's kind of what no, I was cardiac going. arrest. Yeah. All right. Well, rest in peace. And I'm sorry that, that your family has experienced yet another loss, the Presley family. All right, y'all. Uh, we got to get into this story. Mm. Okay. All right. In a recent interview on the Fancy Talk Show podcast, Kevin Gates revealed that he once had drank his partner's urine from a cup and would be open to having a woman urinate in his mouth. Kevin said, I love to have a woman urinate in my mouth. That's beautiful. Are y'all surprised? And have y'all done anything sexually far-fetched? You know what? Whoever had the spirit in the <laughs> answer this question, go right the hell ahead. I'll go first because we know we can't wait to hear cues. So that's urophilia uh, because he gets turned on by the thought of sight, taste, or feel of urine. Now, I don't get turned on by the thought of sight and taste, but I am definitely down for a little bit of a golden shower action on that side. So I got a little bit of a kink with the golden shower and piss play, I must admit. You was one nasty bitch. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You gonna right. watch your Man. language. You, you, you are gonna watch one your language. Nasty bitch. Just you and any other pito, pissy filia or whatever you say, y'all are nasty. Did you, you forget the story you shared where you did some woman wanted to taste your their man's essence off of you? Cut That's, it. Out. That was her business. That I didn't want disgusting. to taste it. She did. That now listen, she wanted to taste it. Not me. Okay, not me, girl. Um, <laughs> Kevin Gates is lying. Kevin Gates is lying. Kevin Gates is lying. He said in an article he, he was driving and had his girl pee in a cup and he drank it. And like, he's lying. Don't nobody do that. Like, they're not no damn black person. Kevin Gates is just saying <laughs> that I this mess just to be in the media. I do not believe it whatsoever. And to answer your question, Claudia, I don't do the bodily fluids, okay? I had a boyfriend one time. I finished in his mouth and he stood on top of me to kiss me and released it back in my mouth and I punched the shit out of his ass. That okay? is disgusting. Right. It is. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And he never did that SHIT again. Are we going to see year three? <laughs> Fox Soul people. Oh, Can I get a Sunday show that has uh, around church? Oh, I, 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 I need Okay, listen, before we go, we want to show some love to our fans in the chat to open up the floor for them to ask us anything. And we do mean anything, although we already, already got too much information. Are y'all ready? Let's yes. do it. Okay, well, let's keep it very, very short and sweet because we have a lot of questions here. Okay, uh, uh, Funky, when can we see Funky's and Eva Ross? Are you done doing that? Um, I, I get in character, y'all, when I get booked to do club appearances and things like that. But other than that, that kind of the wig and makeup thing is kind of behind me. Okay. Claude can change. Claudia, we want to be in your business. You find your sister yet? No, but people send me two different profiles that they think is her. So the search continues. Uh, Paulette Menace, is Al dating anyone? No. Oh, no, no. But I'm open to dating and moving to a new city. Hey, moving to Los Angeles. Maybe that'll change, y'all. And Sam Cook says, Al, can you twerk? No. Okay, Ashley Ashina, question, Funky, would you ever be a part of a reality show and which one? No, uh, I think uh, reality TV careers are short-lived and I want like a long-term television career. So I prefer to stay in the talk space. Evelyn, Glenn, Claudia, do you want to get married? Yes, I do, or at least buy a house with someone. I'm tired of paying all these goddamn bills by myself. Okay, um, Sh Shari and Lloyd, Al, why did you choose the words short pants with your tuxedo? Oh, I was inspired by Pharrell. And I also talked to a designer, Michael Bastian, who said, you know, to make a real statement that's different, you know, you can always throw in the Gucci um, black tie shorts. Okay. Sam Cook, question for Q. Why you hurt Monique feelings from Love After Lockup? I didn't hurt her feelings. I just made an observation publicly on a public show. Nathan, Funky, what's the update on your dating life? 
<laughs> non-existent. I still rotate in the same three. <laughs> and let me clear something up. I am not in a relationship with a married man, okay? And even if I was, his wife gave permission. So y'all be trying to shit. You dating a married man. His wife knows that we have encounters, but I'm not in a relationship with him. Claudia, uh, with his Claudia, wife's permission. Claudia, a hit dog squeal, squeal don't it? A hit dog squeal. Now, even if I was in a relationship with him, his wife don't mind. Oh, Ashley, uh, what's the tea? Ashley, we only have a minute left. Ashley says, uh, who's the bougiest of the three of us? Uh, apparently, they all spit in each other's mouths and peanuts. <laughs> it's me. It is me. It is I. I am her. Uh, okay. Dolly Harris. Claudia, Carlos King mentioned that you were the most underrated housewife when you were on. Would you consider going back? I would go back now, now that I know the game. I didn't know the game when I was there. It was very green. Um, oh, we only have 43 seconds left. Okay, X. Question, Al. When are you going to drop the doctor info for the man BBL? I uh, don't have any man BBL doctors that I can drop. <laughs> And they keep asking me, Claudia, do you speak Italian? Si, pa uh, parla italiano, non, non capito tutti. Wait, I fucked that up. Uh, parla italiano bene, pero... Ah, uh, Girl, I just drank too much. Not really. Hell, but you trying to speak. Not really. <laughs> I tried, I tried it. Not on alcohol. I want to thank my co-host, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva, for always serving the tea. Thanks for watching us. Stay tuned for tracks and tales. What I meant to say is, non parla bene, pero capito tutti. I don't speak well, but I understand. Yes, I got it. Okay, bye, y'all. I'll see y'all next right. week. Have a good soulmates.